to a quick product overview of the new uh, command control tie ejectors. Uh, in the package you will receive the tie ejector itself, product instruction manual, a uh, two position wire harness, and 20 of the wooden ties. Okay, so let's talk about the tie ejector and how it operates. Um, I've just got a small 40 by 60 loop of uh, fast track set up here, so just fast track 036, couple straights. I've got a CW80 for power, and I've got my legacy 990 set for control. A um, couple things you need to be aware of right out of the gate. First off, this is a TMCC product. Um, that means that it's only going to take an 8-bit command. So whatever number you assign to this uh, tie ejector, you're going to have to make sure in your legacy set that uh, in the engine menu behind each ID number, let's say we set it to 10 because the road number is 10, you got to make sure that the uh, engine control type is set to either cab 1 or uh, line out TMCC. And we'll go over the operation of that in a few minutes. So to get started, we uh, obviously want to program at some other number than one. It's engine one out of the box. So flip it over. There's only one switch on the underside, which is program run. Put it into the program position. Place it on the track. Apply power. Using our legacy remote, we're going to go to uh, engine 10. We're going to press the info key. Then we'll press the scroll key until we get over to control type. Um, right now it's set as cab 1 mode, which is accurate. If it says anything else, just press the soft key underneath cab 1. It should say cab 1 mode across the screen. To exit this, simply press info again. This means that uh, the engine 10 ID in your legacy cab and also in your legacy base are set to output an 8-bit command, which is what this will understand. So we've got power applied. We simply press engine 10 and then the set button. Now you're not going to hear any sounds out of the tie ejector because it has none, but what you will see is the front headlight will flicker momentarily, uh, confirming that it received the command. You just take the tie ejector off the track, put it back into the run position, and from this point forward uh, until you change it in the future, it'll always be engine 10. So let's go ahead and go through the operation. It's really very basic. Uh, we address engine 10, Turn the throttle clockwise. Tie ejector begins to move in the forward direction. And get it over the front there and stop it. It is equipped with a coil coupler, so if you press the R button on your cab, coil coupler will open. Press the direction button, change direction, you go backwards. And then to turn on the tie ejector function, you simply press AUX1 in the 9 key or smoke on uh, position on the, on the touchpad. So AUX19 turns the uh, ejector mechanism on and AUX18 turns the mechanism off. So I'll run it back over here, we'll load it up with some ties, we'll show you how it works. So for the sake of the video, I'll turn it around so that you can see it dump the ties on the inside of the, of the track. Like I said, this, uh, the tie ejector comes with 20 ties. That's enough to put into the ejector bin. It's really no specific order. You just want to make sure the ties are straight in there and not crooked. So they get, uh, otherwise they'll get bound up in the mechanism. And then the forward part is just basically storage. Store some ties up there. And we're ready to go. So we'll get it running. Press AUX19. That turns on the ejector mechanism. As the tie ejector runs around, it'll throw the ties out. Great thing about it being command controlled is I can shut that feature off at any time. Oh, sorry, that was zero. So I can turn the mechanism off. I can turn it on and off so I can eject ties in one specific area as opposed to the original design that had that stop lever in it. You can do this anywhere on the layout you choose.
Now for the conventional operators out there, it's real simple. Run the tie ejector in conventional mode. You have your standard forward, neutral, reverse, neutral, uh, directional cycling that you get from uh, either hitting the direction button or controlling the throttle. Um, to activate the, the ejection mechanism, you simply use the bell button. So we'll load this up here real quick. As I said in the video, what you want to do is you want to set the engine control type to uh, cab one mode. So let's just assume for a minute that we're going to assign the uh, tie ejector engine 47. So we go engine 4, 7, and looking at the screen, we can tell right away it's not set to cab 1 or TMCC mode. So we want to press the info key in the upper right hand corner so that we get to the engine menu. Then by pressing the scroll key twice, we get to our control type. We can either select cab 1 mode by pressing the soft key under cab 1, or we can press the soft key under TMCC for TMCC mode. Either mode doesn't matter. Again, it's a TMCC engine, doesn't matter which mode you're running in. So just to uh, follow along what we did in the video, we'll press cab one. Once you've got cab one mode displayed on the top of the screen, you press the info key. You come back to engine 47. The controls for your, uh, for your tie ejector are pretty simple. To turn the ejection mechanism on, you press the aux one key and then number nine. It's actually displayed up here where it says engine normally. You go aux one and nine, it says number nine up there. That'll turn the mechanism on. To shut the mechanism off, you hit eight. Confirm there by number eight. Mechanism turns off. You've got the rear coupler button that'll activate the rear coil coupler. And then the red thumb wheel to increase and decrease uh, power to or speed. And then you've got your direction button to change direction. And that's pretty much the uh, feature set of your uh, tie ejector. So we'll show you how to activate this in conventional mode. Um, you're going to run the train. You're going to use the bell button. Hold the bell button down for about uh, three to four seconds to turn the mechanism on. It'll start dumping the ties. And then hold the bell button down again for another three to four seconds to turn the mechanism off. I'll show you how that works here. Get the uh, starts up in neutral. Starts moving forward. Push down the bell button. Turns the mechanism on, throw a couple ties in there as a passage, you can see that. Then to turn the mechanism off, you simply hit the bell button again for about three to four seconds, and it shuts the mechanism off. And uh, that control works in forward, neutral, or reverse. Now, if you turn the mechanism on in neutral, and then start the train running in reverse, it will still keep the mechanism alive until you hit the bell button again to turn it off. Now one of the other features that we've done with these uh, tie cars or the tie ejectors is uh, earlier in 2015 we released the uh, the tie cars and what's unique about the tie cars is their uh, the decoration is matched to the tie ejector itself so we've got five different road names on tie ejectors we've got five different road names on the tie cars What's unique about them is that they have a uh, they have a two-pin connector on the front and also the rear of the flat car itself. And uh, the reason for that two-pin connector, this uh, the tie car or the uh, the tie ejector, I, sh I should say, the spacing of the of the pickup rollers is such that you know if you're going to run this tie ejector over top of switches or crossovers and you're going to run it slow, there's probably a pretty good chance that you're going to lose pickup and the uh, tie ejector will stall out. So we thought about that ahead of time. We included this uh, two pin connector harness with, uh, actually one came with the tie car and one came with the tie ejector. Um, the one unfortunately with the tie car is a little bit too short. So hence the reason we included one with a tie ejector. It's pretty simple. Take the uh, connector, it's keyed, it only plugs in one way. Plug it into the tie ejector itself. Maybe. Plug it into the tie ejector, plug it into the tie car. A little cumbersome to get to, but not terrible. 
close the coil coupler, put the two on the track. Power it up. We are in conventional mode still. And now what we have is we have power coming to the tie ejector from both collectors on the tie car through that tether up to the tie ejector itself. So pretty much run it through some of the longest crossovers available in three rail. You can run it over switches, 072s, 7.5 high speed switches, whatever you have, and the tie ejector is not going to stall out. Um, I will say that that tie ejector is not going to pull a lot of weight in terms of a number of cars, maybe an additional car in addition to the tie car, so maybe two, three cars at most. If you have any grades on the layout, it's definitely not going to handle those. So that's basically the uh, product overview for the tie ejector. Pretty fun little accessory to add to any layout for a little animated uh, fun. If you have any questions at all, feel free to contact us at talktous at lionel.com. If you're using a post-war transformer like a ZW, KW, 1033, etc., and you don't have access to a bell button to turn that uh, tie ejector on in conventional mode, um, you can pick up a Lionel 600-5906-001, which is our 5906 accessory sound activation button. Basically wires in line with the ground wire to the track and it functions as a bell button for that transformer that only has direction and whistle on it. So, hope you uh, get a chance to see one of these at your dealer soon, and uh, we hope you enjoy them. Thank you.